Following the incursion of the Japanese into the Aleutian Islands, local indigenous people offered their assistance in the creation of the Alaska Territorial Guard. In the early days of June 1942, half a year post the Pearl Harbor incident that thrust the U.S. into the throes of World War II, the Japanese launched another unexpected bombing raid. This assault was targeted at Dutch Harbor, situated in Alaska's secluded Aleutian Islands. The short-lived invasion that ensued resulted in the Japanese naval forces capturing the islands of Atu and Kiska, marking the first occupation of U.S. soil by a foreign power since the War of 1812. Once the U.S. forces expelled the Japanese occupants, it became glaringly evident to the military commanders that continuous surveillance was needed over the lengthy and intimidating 6-640-mile coastline of northwest Alaska for the remainder of the war. As they reached out to indigenous communities for support, they found willing volunteers from the local settlements who were eager to join the freshly minted Alaska Territorial Guard, ATG, colloquially known as the Eskimo Scouts. Editors note, the term Eskimo is viewed as a derogatory and colonially charged term by numerous Arctic inhabitants. Besides a significant number of Euro-Americans, the majority of these recruits hailed from the Klingit, Aleut, Simshan. Haida, and Athabascan communities, with a particular emphasis on the Yipik and Inupiaq people residing along the Bering Sea and Arctic coastline. These volunteers were well acquainted with the land and adept at surviving in severe winter environments. Over 6,300 indigenous individuals, ranging in age from 12 to 80, enlisted in the Alaska Territorial Guard. They each received a rifle, a uniform, an army training manual, snowshoes, and other necessary equipment. These unsalaried sentinels were taught military drills and trained on operating communication systems. They became the sensory extension of the U.S. military in western Alaska. The Alaska Territorial Guard played a critical role in protecting areas surrounding the lend lease transport route which the U.S. leveraged to transport aircraft to Russia, an ally during the war. They also provided security for the village of Platinum, which housed a mine that was the only source of this valuable metal in the Western Hemisphere. Furthermore, the Guard men and women stashed survival supplies along vital transportation routes that were crucial for American Allied forces. Alaska natives, often holding superior ranks, made use of local dog sleds for transportation between military bases. Their responsibilities broadened to encompass the transport of equipment and supplies, the construction of ATG buildings and facilities, and the establishment of airstrips and auxiliary facilities for other military departments. They also cleared hundreds of miles of wilderness trails, established and mended numerous emergency shelter cabins and dispersed emergency food and ammunition containers for the U.S. Navy. Guard members were trained to combat fires, perform land and sea rescues, and engage in enemy encounters. Prominent members of the ATG included Holger Jorge Jorgensen, a bold bush pilot of Norwegian origin and ex-Morse code operator, who later participated in a sit-in to achieve racial integration in Gnome's Dream Theater. Wesley Ujiaktak, before joining the ATG in Utkivik, formerly Barrow, worked as a reindeer herder for the Bureau of Indian Affairs and as a captain of a whaling ship out of Utkivik. In later years, Jorgensen became a voice for Alaska veterans and the Alaska Native community, often participating in elder and youth events. David Ungrudruck Levitt, senior, of Inupiaq descent, joined the ATG as a teenager after a childhood of subsistence hunting. Many years later, he attended the honor flight to Washington, D.C., where he met other ATG veterans who knew their commander, Marvin Muktuk Marston. While some Alaskans valiantly defended their territories, others were forcibly relocated to work in factories. Following the attack on Dutch Harbor, the U.S. military evacuated the Pribilof Islands in Alaska, located in the Bering Sea between the United States and Russia. Indigenous families were crowded onto transport ships and relocated to southeastern Alaska. Here, they were rehoused in fish canneries, abandoned mining buildings, and other unsafe and unsanitary structures. Approximately 100 out of the 881 detainees did not survive to see the end of the war. 
Even as the actions of World War II shifted focus to Europe and the South Pacific, members of the Alaska Territorial Guard remained vigilant. During the war's final months, the Japanese made a desperate attempt to instill fear in Americans by launching 9,000 incendiary balloon bombs that traveled via the jet stream to the mainland. Trained to identify enemy vessels and aircraft, members of the Alaska Territorial Guard spotted these balloons and contributed to their neutralization by shooting them down and disabling them. It took more than six decades for recognition to arrive. Post-war, veterans of the Alaska Territorial Guard, along with their advocates, lobbied the U.S. government and were successful in enacting Alaska's first anti-discrimination law, aimed at terminating the segregation of its indigenous inhabitants. Finally, in 2010, the U.S. government acknowledged the veterans for their service and officially conferred veteran status upon them, when President George W. Bush signed a law commanding the defense secretary to issue honorable discharges to the Alaskan natives. Consequently, Alaska's Department of Military and Veterans Affairs established a task force to inform and aid former members, their relatives, and dependents on how to secure their entitled benefits. The department declared on its website, Our objective is to find all ATG members, rectify past negligence, and facilitate access to their ancestors' service records for future generations. Subsequently, Federal funds were allocated to ensure the deeds of the thousands of members who volunteered their service to protect the territory, and the United States would not be erased from memory. In 2012, a contingent of U.S. military veterans in Bethel, Alaska, utilized a portion of these funds to construct a memorial park in honor of the Alaska Territorial Guard veterans.